remember that Sunday when I gave you all out your awards? What did I give you? Ten to the winners. I gave five to the not winners. They're not losers. They just didn't win. <laughs> but what happened to the other people that just happened to be in the building that day? They got blessed too. God, God, God will bless you for giving. He'll bless those that are attached to you. And then he'll bless folks who just sticking around. Because you hang around blessed folk. It ain't because you gave nothing. Some of you all are riding on a half tank of gas. A, a rider and that needle is right on E. And the reason you ain't broke down because you hanging with folk that God has already blessed. And you know you're not giving right. Year and some change, I've been saving my fives and my tens. And I told you my goal was $5,000. And I cringe, at least be laughing. When, when I go buy something, I have a 20. Then, then the, the person at the cash register, my change would be $15.16, and they give me three fives. <laughs> and I'd be breaking out of the sweat because I know I can't spend it. <laughs> but it's discipline. Yeah. It's discipline. It's discipline. I'm literally about $1,500 short of my $5,000 goal. All right, all right, all right. And, uh, it's because you're the pastor. Oh, trust me, that ain't it. <laughs> it's because there are times in life when you got to sacrifice. Yes, yes. And if whatever you want to do, you got to sacrifice. If it's saving money, you can't eat out every day. Whatever you want to do. If, if you want to save money, you can't keep spending it. That's right. But you cannot save, spend, and neglect God at the same time. If all you have is your savings, I, I would trust it in the hands of God. And I'm not telling you to go and cash your, cash your, 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 uh, your, 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 your life policy in and for the church. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is, you have to find a way to give the same way you find to get everything else done. You got to challenge yourself to give God more this year. You cannot be blessed for real, for real, until you give God. Um, he said, I want you to have time to make this offering in your own way. He said, I don't want to force anything or hurry you at the last minute. Some of you all hurt yourself and get mad with God because what he's asking you to do, you try to do it all at one time. Amen. Amen. Even for the church, if, if the goal for the church, for, for instance, if everybody in the church for the, for the year 2019 uh, bring an additional $1,000 in. But well, I ain't got no $1,000 sitting around. Maybe not. But if you put two dollars right here, a dollar fifty cent right here, mm -hmm. seventy-five cent right here, twenty cent here, by the end of the year you have that thousand dollars. If you want to get that new car, you'll save it. <laughs> or go borrow it and then be in debt because six months later you're losing. And some of us are losing what God wanted us to have because we didn't trust Him. To my young folk once again. If you are currently working, you need to trust God with your substance. You need to trust God with your substance. If you got money for gas and money to eat, money for clothes, you got money for church. I got to push on you as your pastor. Because I want you blessed. Somebody shout, there's a benefit to someone. There's a benefit to someone. The next benefit of sowing is giving. The next benefit of sowing or giving is you are not alone. You are not alone. Amen. Paul tells them, I'm sending some brothers to help make sure you're ready. Oftentimes, we feel like we're the only ones giving. And at times, it very well could be the case. You have 
had a family function and everybody's supposed to bring a dish, yeah. and you always bring the dish, and the same person don't ever bring nothing, and they complain about all the food. Who made this potato salad? Who made them cabbages? Who made them green? They ain't even clean. Who made them chicken? <laughs> you, you know, what, what was that? The first um, um, a New Year's Eve meal for Black Eyed Peas? What is what, what is it? Right. right. Y'all didn't eat that stuff for free. Somebody had to go buy it. But there's always somebody sitting at the table. They don't never bring nothing but their appetite. Mm -hmm. <laughs> don't be that person this year. If you are the person that never brings nothing to the table in life, not just a fool, but in ministry, on your job, in school, in your friendships and or relationships, if you don't never bring nothing to those things, this year is the year that you bring something other than yourself to the table. Amen. But you got to make your mind up. I don't want to sit at another table without bringing something other than myself. Amen. Ooh, I knew it was going to be quiet, but not this quiet. <laughs> but I truly believe in 2019, if we can get everyone really to just embrace giving back to God the way God has given to us. Now, not, nothing out of the ordinary. If you just give what God has required you to give, I guarantee you, you will see a difference. Not just in your finances, in your life. Amen. Amen. Parents, you want to see your kids blessed? Start tithing right. Amen. Amen. Don't tithe five percent. That's easy. The requirement he asks is ten. Yes. Because I guarantee, you, if they got locked up, you'll find money for bail. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got to walk heavy for the, for the whole month. I celebrate at the end of the month. <laughs> but I, God knows I want you blessed. I want you all to be able to look at before the end of this year to see how God has blessed your substance because you trusted him in the beginning of the year. Yes. So my young folk that's my age, Mari, um, 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 uh, Tiana, y'all, uh, Andre and Sean, Serena, I'm challenging y'all. I'm challenging y'all. My age bracket, I'm challenging y'all to give. And if you are giving the same thing or not giving at all, I challenge you, you got to do better. Why? Because God want to bless you, but he can't bless you when he can't trust you. Mm. You're not going to trust nobody with a key to your house if you don't trust them, right? Because in your house, you have your possessions. Your, your, you may have money laying anywhere. You're not just going to let anybody in your house that you don't trust. But every Sunday morning, you got people coming to the house of God. Yeah. And God is looking inside. I like, you know what? Now, look. You my child, and I love you. But there is a, a greater demand on your life. Yes. And it starts in your sacrificial giving. Because sometimes giving does hurt. It does. I'm not telling you giving don't hurt. Sometimes I scratch my head like, uh -uh. Case in point, who's at the district, who's at the district service Sunday? And the spirit got high right after offering. And I heard the spirit of God say, write another check. I said, another one? Uh -huh. I said, well, maybe I was just too high. I said, no. <laughs> I said, no, that won't, that, 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 no, no. I just ain't ate nothing yet, so that's probably what that was. <laughs> write another check. Write another check. And I was, you know how we, we try to time God. God, well, if it's you, uh, let's let the red go. God, if it's you, let, 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 let the bird fly in the church. Like, you ain't no crazy stuff like that. God, if, if that's you, let the lights blink three times. Like, let the And what I did, I got my checkbook, wrote it. Then somebody from the finance said, did you mean to write that check again? Yeah, I, I meant to write another. Then had service Monday night. And what I gave, double what I gave, was given right back to me for Monday night. Now, I, I'm telling you, the reason I'm telling you is because you, I want you blessed. Now, whatever you do once you get
get what God is going to give you, that's up to you. But it, it behooves you to bless him in return. Amen. Right. I, I'm, I'm going to go out. I see some of y'all twitching a little bit. <laughs> um, the next benefit to giving is God has given us time. Yes. Yeah. God has given us time. God has given us time. Paul tells them, I don't want anyone to just drop in on you and find that you are not prepared. And as, I, as if I have, have said, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Paul tells them, I do not want anyone to just drop in on you and find you are not prepared. As I have said, some in addition to sending some help, I want you to know, I want you to have what you need to make the offering. And I want to give you time, and I'm giving you time to make the offering in your own way. He was telling them, do not wait to the last minute and start complaining about what you do not have. Just because you do know the time is coming for you to give. Mm -hmm. Some people will not, will, will not start complaining until it's time to give. Mm -hmm. You come to church every Sunday morning. I don't know why they're doing offering. Why, why not? Mm -hmm. You know offering come every Sunday. That's right. Yes. That's right. But the great thing about God is you don't have to wait. I don't. And let me take the scale off of some of our eyes. We don't have to wait till the offering time to give. Amen. If God happens to move on you while we're praying to give, feel free to walk up to the altar and drop your money. Amen. If God happens to uh, uh, move on you while I'm preaching one Sunday morning and tell you to give, you don't have to wait, give. Amen. If it's after offering, give again. If it's before offering, give. Because why? Because sometimes even in offering, we turn our ears off and God is still speaking because offering is still a part of worship. Amen. 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 Offering time is just not something we do just because we do it. We do, we do it as an act of worship. So why do people do an offering time? They also start having a whole bunch of conversations. Well, start praying right before offering. Start praying on your way to church. God, what do you want me to give? I gave a dollar last week, gave a dollar last month, gave a dollar last year. What do you want me to give? He may say three dollars. Well, no, God, I'm going to give this same dollar. That's all I got. No, it's not. He has given us time. I want to encourage us this morning that there are, in fact, benefits to giving, benefits to giving back to God. And what God has already loaned you. Your job, it's not really yours. He found He allowed favor to find you. Yes. 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 That house that you live in, yeah, your name is on it, but he just loaned it to you. Yes. That promotion that you got when you really didn't think you deserved it, that's favor finding you. The fact your car hadn't been repossessed and you've been behind in payment. That, 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 that's not that you're cute and sexy. No, no, no. That's because God has favor on you because you trusted him enough to give. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Amen. The word tells us to, in fact, give. <coughs> and it will come back to us. It's a good measure. Press, somebody know the word. Press down. Shake it together. And it says, shall men give unto your bosom? When you give, he'll take what you have given. He'll press it down. He'll shake it together and allow it to run over. And folk that you do not even know will bless you. Some of us are missing God's blessing because we're looking for people that we know to bless us. But he said, no, I have commanded folk that you do not know. You remember Elijah, don't you? Yes. Elijah had a relationship with them ravens, but he commanded him to feed them. Yeah. Come here, Elijah, come back one more time. He'll tell us that God found favor with the widow woman. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know, you remember the story? Yeah. Yes. And that's because Elijah had, decide, had decided to be a spokesperson for God. Yes. What have you told God you was going to do for Ooh. him? Come on, here. That's a good question. What have you told God? God, 2019, whatever you want me to do, 
Jesus, whatever you want me to do, Jesus, I do it. Are you telling the truth? Because he's not going to ask you to do anything that's easy for you to do. But man, back then, he said, what? You said, I can give up what fruit? <laughs> you don't eat fruit, huh? <laughs> you can give it up. Okay. Good son. Because some of us easy. I give up fat back. I give up pork. You ain't ate pork in five years. That ain't no struggle for you. I give up sweet. You ain't got no more teeth no more. I don't <laughs> You don't even like sweets. So, so the fact of sacrificing and giving to God is, is you're, you're sacrificing sacrificing something that you think you can't live without. Yes. Mm. Mm. Man, that's a good note. Sacrificing is not sacrificing until you give up something that you think you can't live without. Somebody write that down and give it to me when I'm, when I'm done. Um, sacrificing, because I, I need that one. Sacrificing is not sacrificing until you give up something you think you cannot live without. I, I, I just need that cigarette. I, I take it, I take it, I take it. You ever notice, my, my mother's a smoke. You ever notice, no matter how cold it is outside, people that smoke still go outside? Yes, See the below the breeze outside, and you just that outside. I shake it. I wouldn't want no habit I got to stand outside. Right, right, right. I mean, because I used to watch you, you buy the pack and you pack the pack. I don't know what packing did, but you don't feel it. Yeah. Yeah. what are you doing? And then people that smoke all the time don't never have no light. <laughs> and because I have dreads, folks just assume I smoke. <laughs> right. Hey, you got a light? No. Because I don't smoke. Oh, for real? <laughs> what makes you think I smoke? I never ask that question. But I already know why they think I smoke. give up stuff that we think we can't live without. We got to be willing to sacrifice. We got to be willing to trust God with every ounce of our substance. 2018, car repossessed. 2018, emotionally distraught. 2018, just going through a whole bunch of stuff. And yet still, God said, there is still a demand on you to give. Pastor, wake up one morning, my car gone. Embarrassed. But God said, I'm still commanding you to give. Say, God, you must be crazy. But it took me to make one phone, phone call and got a yes on the other end. I'm telling you, God has a way. And you got to trust Him. Because when you're in need, some, some of us don't have people to call. Some people don't. So I, I want friends that, that just got $10,000 just laying at the house. I, I want friends that, 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 that I can call and say, hey, I need a million dollar loan. Well, here you go. Don't even worry about paying it back. I want friends like that in 2019. But for 
their teaching. That's right. yes. Because some of us are just, just natural reachers. We'll never give money. We'll never give nothing. We just take. And we speak to that demon this morning. If you're used to always taking, we speak to that demon from the pits of hell this morning. This is not the year you're going to leech. This is going to be the year that you're going to be able to bless somebody else. If you're tired of borrowing and not paying back and borrowing and hiding and ducking and lying to folk, you got to give to God first. Robbing Peter to pay Paul to see Susie? No. No. How about for all of that? This is the year that you got to come out of your foolishness. But if you want to stay broke, stay broke. But I want you, as your pastor, I want you blessed financially. And then my, my prayer is that God will give you the mind to be a good steward of your substance. Because some of you, you got the money, you just ain't got no sense how to spend it right. Amen. Baby, go crank the car. <laughs> I'm telling you, some of you got money, you just not disciplined enough to spend it the right way. Well, I'm going out here. Okay, we'll keep going down there. And I know this is a hard word, y'all. But I'm telling you, God wants this house blessed. Yes, yes. yes he does. He has us on trial right now. Mm -hmm. he, he has us on trial. Let me see what they're going to do when I add two people to the church. Let me see what I'm going to do. Let, well, let me see how they're going to act if I, if I add a, a 200 people to the church. Will, will they let go of their responsibility financially? Will they let go of their duties as a leader? There's a benefit to soon. I came by here the first time in 2019 to just let us know there are benefits to giving. What can you give? Well, I'm glad you asked me. You can give your time to the Lord by reading your word, attending Bible study, Sunday school, Sunday worship, and praying. <coughs> you can give your talents to the Lord. He has given all of us at least one talent. It may not be singing, but it could be praise dancing. It may not be praise dancing, but it may be ushering. It may not be ushering, but it may be a good steward. It may not be a good steward, but it may be a, a, a good trustee. It may not be a trustee, but you may be a good praiser. You may be that person in the pews that's praying for the pre preacher, praying for service, praying for God, anointed within the house. Everybody has at least one gift. Put your hand on yourself and say, self, self there is one gift, there is one gift. Inside, of me. inside of me. There is at least one gift. On the inside of me. Yeah, yeah. There's at least one. You can give your tithes to the Lord. 10% of your earning. Not what you get back after they take taxes out. <laughs> well, you know, I tithed. I tithed the other day. Yeah, they took my taxes and I tithed off. The no, 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 no. Go, go back. Before they took taxes out. Gross. Gross. You tied all that. Well, why I got to tie? Because it's your earning. You earned the taxes they took out. I can't even believe he talking about paying. Talk about money. You better believe because all month I'm doing it. Amen. Amen. All right. Because I want the house blessed. Last year, even in all that I went through, God was still able to bless financially. And I literally went from 2017 being the borrower, 2018 being the lender, and man. He smacked me in my face with this one. He said, I made you the lender, not the borrower, and now you mad because you lending and don't always get it back. <laughs> he said, 
I will make you the lender and not the borrower. But now I'm scratching my head like, look here, Lord. I ain't gonna be too many more lenders. <laughs> and folk ain't paying me back. He said, no, 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 no. This is what I said I was gonna do. I said I would make you the lender and not the borrower. Some of us are not blessed because we still borrow. For 2019 to be better and different for you, stop being the borrower and start being the lender. I ain't got a whole bunch of money to be lending. No, but just try it. Let somebody find out who was, who was driving the other day, um, Elise and I. Now, if you all have never really dealt with her, she has a heart of gold. We was pulling up and a man was standing outside with a sign. You know how people do now. I think that's a full-time job for some yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, God bless you, I'm a without a job, whatever. She pulled out a five-dollar bill and I cringed. <laughs> Cause I feel like everybody five-dollar bill should go to me. <laughs> she pulled out a five-dollar bill, she said, give it to him. <laughs> but then I had to remember. She does what she sees her dad does. Her dad do. Yeah. She does what she sees her dad do. Parents, I'm saying that for you. Your children will do what they see you do. Amen. Your grandchildren will do what they see you do. If they see you giving, they'll give. If they hear and see you complaining, that's all they're going to do. And when she first started doing it, she's been a giver for years. And I, why are you giving everybody your money? And then one day, somebody had to bring it to my attention. She's only doing what she see you do the most of. And I'm not saying that she's not, she's not, I'm not saying to put her on a pedestal. But I'm saying that when, he, when God starts moving in your life as an adult, as a parent, sometimes it flows over to your children. It does. It does. And God will use them just to remind you of the promises. Because yes. God has promised you some things. And you haven't seen it manifest in your life, but look at your children and grandchildren. Yes. Yes. It's manifesting. Yes. 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 Hey, question, I'll let you go. I've been up too long. How many of you got credit cards? Don't raise your hand. Just blink, just blink, just blink. Just blink. I didn't even look at you, but hey. I'm sure that many of us We'll buy stuff on credit, and we'll say, I'm going to pay you back, pay it back, whatever. But even inside of your credit card, trusting somebody trusting you to pay what you said you was going to pay. How many, how many times have God put, given you a, a credit card balance out of all that he's done for you? How many times have he's tried, had, how many times have he put interest on what he's given you? As he said, you know what? I woke you up this morning. That's three hundred dollars. <coughs> I kept the children say that's two thousand yeah. dollars. I gave you a job that you're late to every day. Yeah. That's ten thousand yeah. dollars. I allowed you to get home from riding on the road, vacation after vacation. Yes. That's twenty thousand dollars. <coughs> and then what? What did God say? You know what? I've allowed my son. To hang on the cross. And they beat it just for you. Priceless. I saw your sins before you was born in your mom's womb. And I still forgave you. That's priceless. I allowed my son to be spit on and a, a crown of thorns on his head. That's priceless. And give him sour stuff to drink. Yes. For you. That's yes. Christ.
coming off. 